Smilodon fatalis, the saber-toothed cat. More commonly known as the saber-toothed tiger, the prehistoric saber-toothed cat is one of the most famous animals from the Pleistocene. The name is a misnomer, though, as it does not have any real lineage tracing back to modern tigers. The evolutionary line that the saber-toothed cat belongs to essentially ends with this species. The Smilodon fatalis is a mid-sized family member of the overall Smilodon genus. The average weight of the fatalis is believed to have maxed out at about 280 kilograms, with an overall length averaging 175 centimeters and a shoulder height of 100 centimeters. The size of a saber-toothed cat rivals that of a modern-day lion. Paleontologists in 1969 determined that despite the other cat-like qualities of the Smilodon fatalis, from the neck up, it probably would have looked more like a bulldog, aside from the terrorizing front teeth that could grow up to 28 centimeters long, that is. The evidence of its existence has been found all over the Western Hemisphere, from Brazil to Los Angeles, with its smaller side-set eyes giving it binocular vision combined with razor-sharp retractable claws the saber-toothed cat was one of the apex predators of the Pleistocene. The Smilodon fatalis was not without its weakness, though. It did have some physical attributes working against it. For example, the tail of the fatalis was extraordinarily short for a big cat, which means that it didn't have the greatest balance while running. On top of this, climbing was not something that this animal participated in often due to its broad limbs and short feet, which were built more for ambush hunting. The perfect prey and main source of food for these ancient cats were large, slower-moving herbivores. The extinction of the saber-toothed cat came a little later than many other animals from the Pleistocene, approximately 10,000 years ago. This was mainly attributed to the fact that the larger prey that the saber-toothed cat was accustomed to hunting died out. They were replaced by smaller, more agile animals that were more difficult for the ancient cat to catch. The dire wolf. Another famous predator from the late Pleistocene is the genus Canis dirus, better known as the dire wolf, not to be confused with the creatures of the same name from Game of Thrones. The ancient dire wolf was believed to have existed in both the western and eastern hemispheres, with skeletal remains found in North America and Asia. The largest concentration of dire wolf skeletal remains have been found in North America, not only in the La Brea area of Los Angeles, but also in many areas of Florida. Believed to have been the largest canine to exist at any point in time, Canis dirus could grow to an estimated weight of 68 kilograms based on analysis of available complete skeletons. Some have speculated a possibility of even larger weights than that, with skeletal structures possibly being able to hold up to 110 kilograms. This still puts them at the top of the canine size scale, even possibly outweighing some of the larger species of modern dogs. The closest modern relatives to the dire wolf would be the more familiar gray wolf and the Yukon wolf. These types of wolves would be more like cousins to the dire wolf as opposed to siblings. As more recently, it's been determined that the direst variety belongs in its own subgroup of the Canis genus. The type of prey that the ancient dire wolf hunted put it into nearly direct competition with the saber-toothed tiger as it also dined on large, slower-moving herbivores. The eventual extinction of these herbivores led to the dwindling numbers of both dire wolves and saber-toothed cats. Between this and these two animals, most likely constantly in a battle over resources, the dire wolf was believed to have officially gone extinct around 10,000 years ago as well. The American Lion Another fierce predator who also found its home in North and South America was Panthera leo atrix, more commonly known as the American lion. It's sometimes referred to as the American cave lion due to its physical similarities to the ancient cave lion of Eurasia, although the American variety did most of its hunting in grasslands and savannas, much like the Eurasian cousin it tended to seek shelter in caves. The common belief is that these two separate types of lions existed as a single species previous to the Pleistocene, but were split apart and forced to evolve separately due to changing continental conditions. Why this particular species went extinct is a bit more of a mystery than that with other ancient cat or canine species. 
It's most likely that the cause of the American lion's extinction was also due to the lack of available slow-moving herbivores at the end of the Pleistocene. Early humans are also believed to have contributed to this extinction as well. Another factor is that, due to its build and intelligence, this animal did not have natural enemies, just competition for food. Panthera leoatrix could have weighed well over 500 kilograms, with an average shoulder height of 1.2 meters and length of up to 2.5 meters, making it nearly 25% larger than most modern lions. This also places it much larger than its main food competition, the saber-toothed cat. The American lion was considered to be much smarter, which gave it an edge while hunting. This extra intelligence is made evidence by the fact that their remains haven't been found in as much abundance as their competitors, especially in the famed La Brea Tar Pits, suggesting their ability to avoid threats with much more success. Another aspect that gave this species an edge in the hunt was its speed, which is believed to have gone in excess of 30 miles per hour. The Giant Short-Faced Bear Another famous find from the La Brea Tar Pits was the Arctodus simus, also known as the giant short-faced bear. There have been many derivations in size between the remains that have been found, but it's believed to have been the largest mammalian carnivore of any era. This particular ancient bear weighed in at its largest at approximately 950 kilograms, which is pretty massive when compared to other predators that existed in the same era and environment. Skeletal measurements have put this species at a height of 1.5 to 1.8 meters tall when standing on all fours. Being that claw marks sitting at 15 feet high have been found in the caves where this giant bear was known to live, it's believed that when standing on its hind legs, it could stand as tall as 12 feet. The Arctodus simus made its habitat mainly in North America during the end of the Pleistocene putting it in direct conflict with the other species on this list as far as food supplies were concerned. There's been debate over the diet of this short-faced bear due to the lack of evidence with its remains. Some consider it to have been a hyper-predator, believing it to have been particularly brutal due to its size. Others have maintained that this bear's size actually worked against its predatory endeavors because its limbs were considered to be on the small side comparatively. Although carnivore is the word generally attributed to its eating habits, the possibility of it being an omnivore is still being considered. It's even a possibility that the Arctodus simus was what's known as a kleptoparasite, meaning that it intimidated smaller predators and stole their food right after hunting. The most likely scenario that most people can agree on is that the giant short-faced bear was an opportunistic omnivore a trait similar to that of its modern descendant, the brown bear. Homo sapiens – People By the end of the Pleistocene era, many species started to evolve into the creatures we know today. Chief amongst these, and also one of the deadliest species of any era, was Homo sapiens. Put in more simple terms, people. Of course, plenty of proto-human species existed before the Pleistocene, but this is when the human race truly started to become what we are today. Having gone through huge evolutionary changes during the era, by the end, humans had been able to impact the environment in many ways. Starting at approximately 40,000 years ago, megafauna extinctions became a regular thing, leading up to the end of the Ice Age. These extinctions were caused by human use of the environment around them. Hunting larger game for food and other resources was another major cause for extinction for all of the other species on this list. It's understood that for generations before modern humans came to be, proto-humans did make use of tools. But it was with this particular evolutionary step that humans really put tool usage into full gear. With proto-humans starting off on what is now Africa and spreading out from there in the coming eras, by the time 12 to 10,000 years ago, Homo sapiens could be found essentially everywhere. As the evolution of early humans moved forward, they adapted to their varied environments while they migrated to different parts of the globe. The size of these early modern humans became just as varied as they are to this day.